Hey everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and sharing some practical tips along the way. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting April 22nd, 2013. I'm attending one of the biggest European security conferences, InfoSec UK, this week, so I need to make this episode brief. But before I move on, let me share uh, three of the quick themes I took away from InfoSec this year. One of the first takeaways is that security policies need to do a better job of aligning to business goals. A lot of security experts worry about making sure to have perfect protection for their organization, but they're not there to perfectly protect against every single threat. Rather, they're there to make sure that business can go on with minimal risks. They're more into risk management. So that was one takeaway. Another common theme on the show floor and in talks was sharing cyber intelligence. Uh, both vendors and customers and businesses, if they do a better job sharing information about the sources of breaches, we as a community can come together and protect each other from the attacks we're facing on the internet. And the third theme was a warning that businesses of all sizes are at risk of cyber attack. Both the Verizon's risk team and PricewaterhouseCooper released reports suggesting that all size businesses, even very small or medium sized businesses, are at risk of cyber attack. In fact, the PricewaterhouseCooper report said that 63% of small to medium businesses reported having suffered at least one cyber attack over the past few years. So this goes to show that no matter how big an organization you are, you do need to take some cybersecurity precautions. Moving on to security news, one of the big stories from early in the week was a big Twitter attack. During the week, attackers gained access to the Associated Press's Twitter feed, and they used it to send out some tweets saying there was a couple explosions in the White House and that Obama was hurt. What's very interesting about this, this false tweet was right after it happened, the stock market actually had a huge nosedive. Now, of course, it's since recovered, but it goes to show you how dangerous some of these social engineering type uh, propaganda attacks on social networks could be. Now this attack wasn't due to any sort of security vulnerability in Twitter. Uh, the attackers used phishing attacks, very targeted phishing attacks, to gain access to the Associated Press's Twitter password and credentials. So you should be very careful of any emails that try to get you to click a link and enter your password. In any case, even though it wasn't really Twitter's fault, Twitter does plan on releasing, in fact, they're betaing two token authentication, which will really help protect against these sort of credential stealing flaws. So if you do use Twitter or any other social media that offers two token authentication, I highly recommend you use it. Another big story is yet another big Java exploit in the wild. This time it's not literally a zero-day vulnerability. In fact, it's a vulnerability that Oracle just patched last week. Basically, attackers have, have created an exploit for one of the vulnerabilities that Oracle patched last week. It's a very serious flaw that allows an unauthenticated attacker to gain full access of your computer. They've basically weaponized this exploit and already started delivering it in many of the popular uh, web exploit kits, including the Red Kit or some of the other crimeware kits out there. So if you're a Java user and you haven't actually updated Java last week, I highly recommend you do so immediately. More to the point, lately I've been recommending if you can do without Java not to install it at all. And you can also use plugins like NoScript or Google's Not Scripts to avoid running Java content by default. So I'd recommend doing that as well. The last story I want to cover this week is some more interesting research from the creator of Metasploit, H.D. Moore. You might remember a previous video where I talked about his research into the vulnerabilities in universal plug-and-play services on the internet. 
This week he released some research into some older devices which I call out-of-band serial port servers, sometimes also called terminal servers, but they're not at all like Microsoft's terminal server, by the way. In any case, these are devices that plug into the serial port of a device and then can offer some out-of-band access to that device, either through a telephone modem or through 3G or other wireless means like that. They allow administrators to remotely maybe reset devices such as uh, a power backup devices or, or maybe other types of systems that you can connect to serially. In any case, just like his universal plug-and-play research, Moore used different means to scan the internet for these devices. He used the Shodan network and a couple other internal means to actually scan the internet and look for open serial port devices. Of course, once he found them, he tried to see if he could gain access to them. In long story short, the results of his research found over 114,000 of these devices online and accessible over the internet. Worse yet, he found that 13,000 of these devices offered immediate unauthenticated root access to both the device and the system they were connected to. And in some cases, these were things like traffic light control systems. So a pretty dangerous attack. In any case, I'll be sure to post a link to this report in the WatchGuard Security Center blog post associated with this video. I highly recommend you check it out. And on top of that, Moore has released some uh, Metasploit modules that make it possible for for you to scan your network looking for these open serial port devices so you can shut them down. By the way, some mitigation techniques if you do use these out-of-band devices for your network, some things you can do to avoid vulnerabilities is first use some sort of encrypted communication channel with them, preferably things like SSH. On top of that, do not use the default username and be sure to have a strong password associated with these devices. There's other tips in Moore's report as well, so be be sure to check it out. So that's it for this week's quick on the road edition episode. That said, there are some other interesting stories this week, including some interesting legal proceedings that have a, a lot of implication with cybersecurity and information security. So I'll be sure to post links to these interesting stories in the reference section associated with this video on the WatchGuard Security Center blog. So be sure to go check that out. On top of that, I highly recommend you follow our blog regularly as I post other stories throughout the week. And you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.